Hello and welcome to another episode of Homeschooling Helps with Andrea Schwartz. I'm Andrea Schwartz and today we're going to talk about life after homeschooling. Now first let's lay the groundwork. Education is something that should be a lifelong pursuit. So by the time one graduates from high school you shouldn't take it to mean that learning new things is over. In fact I believe learning just begins once you have to practically apply all the things that you've learned up to this point. Now, a lot of people think that if you're going to continue your education, you have to do it by means of going to college or a university. And that may be appropriate for certain people and certain things they feel called to do. But today we're going to talk about other options. Uh, part of the downsides of automatically going to college include the secular, humanistic, materialistic view that is prevalent in most schools of higher education, not to mention the enormous debt that people actually accrue through loans and the kinds of activities that maybe aren't necessary to produce someone who is capable of being a responsible adult in the world, able to support himself or herself, and then eventually have a family and raise that family. So there are other options. There's the entrepreneurial option where people start a business and serve a need that are that, that is obvious that is needed. And if they're not necessarily sure, then there's the opportunity for internships. And today we're going to talk about such an opportunity. Now, my co-host, Nancy Wilk, who I will bring into our broadcast right now, she, along with her husband, began something entitled Church and Maine. And Church and Maine, on the surface, is a market and a restaurant. But it's really much more than that. It really is a place where opportunity happens. And so they have opened up the, uh, the enterprise to homeschooling groups to come and meet there and have classes there. They've also opened it up to the community to have various meetings and groups meet there. And then they go beyond their location and involve other community enterprises with homeschooling groups or families who are interested in pursuing a greater um, look at what's available and, and opportunities. Well, one of the things that they have uh, done is decided that they will use their enterprise as a way in which to train people to pursue similar things or just get their feet wet in learning how business operates and how someone goes about organizing and, and taking a vision that they have and bringing it into reality. So they started looking for interns or an intern. And Nancy's going to share with us the process they went through of selecting the person who'd be their first intern. And then we'll get a chance to meet him and talk with him as well. So Nancy, take it away. Okay. Well, I need to back up a little bit, Andre, because you said something that's not, that's on my wish list, but it's not actually true yet. We do not have a restaurant here yet. We have plans to put in a kitchen and we do hope to move that direction. But today we're not a restaurant. So okay. I want to clear that up because there so are don't people show up and expect a meal at church. And don't come to eat today. <laughs> okay. But we are, you know, really that, that is on our plan. So, um, um, you may remember our visit, our, um, viewers may remember that church in Maine is a family business ministry. We are dedicated to a biblical worldview returning to the family the responsibilities that God says is ours and faithfully stewarding the resources entrusted to our care. So when we think about those things in the space that we have, um, then we are, and we're looking for um, an intern. We think in terms of, does that person have a biblical worldview? If they, if they do, great. If they don't, that's okay. Are they willing to, um, are they willing to pursue that? You know? Um, so that was one thing that we really needed for our intern is to, to be, have that commitment to a biblical worldview. Let's face it. None of us are born again with perfect theology. So that's something that has to be developed and we have to have a, have a, 
a confidence in um, in looking back to what God's word says instead of what you know my favorite what my favorite pastor says. So that's one thing that really had was a non-negotiable in our intern that that we they had to be willing to look at what God's word says and then to very very practically apply it. So now let me stop for a second. So you weren't looking for a carbon copy of yourself or your husband. You were looking for someone who would add value to what you were doing, but was willing to work within the context that God's law applies to everything, including business and running a market and running exactly. a family business enterprise. Exactly. And, and and realizing too that we're all in process of figuring that out. So nobody has arrived. Uh, obviously nobody has, has arrived, but, but as God gives us opportunity and challenges, those are, those are the terms in which we need to, um, to, to resolve those things is, is to go back and look at what God's word says and apply them. Okay. So, again. so when you were looking for an intern, was this going to be a volunteer position or a paid position? Well, all of our interns start out voluntary. But after a season of voluntary internship, then if we have an apprenticeship, which which would be a paid position, um, if we have an apprenticeship or a um, an opportunity for employment or an opportunity to join us in a entrepreneurial incubator sort of um, space, there, there is other opportunity, but we have to start with that, um, not with that voluntary internship, just as that's, that's where we start. So and just what people understand doctors first become interns and then they become residents. And then eventually they're able to call themselves someone who has finished their training. So the idea of internship and apprenticeship is really not a new idea. It's how people have done things in business for years. And it's only recently, we should say, that college and university became the sole focus of how someone gets ready for adulthood. Right. And our thinking in having a voluntary intern is that they really get to come and show us what they can already do. And they get to explore the idea instead of committing to it. So, you know, it's it's for a season. It's not a long time. It's not a big commitment. It doesn't cost them. It doesn't cost us. It's just mutually beneficial to um, try it out. So it's like, so, a Let, let's find out if this is going to work. Right, right, right. The second thing that we wanted our intern to be able to do was um, was to to learn outside the box. We do not have canned curriculum for our our um, our things. It's very organic. We work with um, the vision and the people that God brings to us, and so um, we were, you know, trying to just think through how we were going to do this. And um, the Lord brought somebody to us. And so it, it wasn't a real structured thing. We didn't knock on doors and say, hey, we, you know, will you apply? Will you apply? Will you apply? It's somebody that God brought to us. So we were very um, happy and um, really encouraged by that. Okay. So, so I sort of gave the hint that we were going to bring him on board. So people already know that you chose a young man. Was it specific that it had to be a man or it had to be a woman? Who were you looking for or could it be either? You know, we were not looking uh, particularly for a man or particularly for a woman, but just whoever the Lord would bring to us that had um, a vision to advance the kingdom of God and to um, exercise their calling and advance that into the marketplace. All right, right. So we have a question. I guess somebody tuned in maybe a little bit late. She wants to know what is your family business? So right now it focuses mostly on the market. So why don't you talk about the market? Sure. Sure. Um, our, our business is, is local APX market. We're an event space and marketplace located in Appomattox, Virginia. 
and we are bringing to the area local and regional food, farm, and artisan vendors. And so that's what we're that's our business right now. That's that's what our storefront consists of. That's how we promote our space. But our um, our big idea, as we said before, is that of church in Maine to um, to um, exercise our faith in every area of life. All right. So I think it might be appropriate now for us to bring your intern into this conversation. Please introduce him. OK, um, I would like for you to meet Graham Donahue. Graham is a 22 year old young man and um, homeschooled. So, Graham, say hello. Hello. Thanks for having me today. So, We're Graham, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? Okay, so, um, yeah, I grew up, um, I was homeschooled all the way through. Um, my dad was a pastor for the first part of my life. And then after a um, after some challenges with doing that, he decided he wanted to um, have his own business and just um, help start a church and just pastor um like part time, and so he did that for a while. And he started a window cleaning business, and um, ever since I was about seven, I had the idea that I wanted to become a farmer. I'm not exactly sure um, what what caused that. I guess you, I guess it was God's calling or something. And so I, um, when I turned 12, we moved onto my great grandmother's farm, and I was able to get a couple sheep and get started with that. And um, when I graduated, I graduated in 2014. And I decided that in order to figure out whether I, how to make the farming thing work, I needed to get some experience on some successful, you know, larger scale farms. So I ended up selling my sheep flock that I had built up and doing everything and going and doing a couple internships on some farms. And um, through that, I learned a lot more about the farming itself and then, um, uh, you know, and how that worked. And when I moved, I moved back home in uh, 20, I guess it was 2015, and uh, kind of started back up again and been doing that and some other things. And um, Can I ask you a question? Yeah. All right. So do you think it's um, a good idea for people to try their hand at things without saying, this is what I must do, and be willing to say, this isn't at all what I thought it would be. I don't think I want to go in this direction. Absolutely. I think that's really important. Um, I, I think, um, and we might get into this later, but over time I've kind of seen that um, though I like the farming, it's not the, um, the I don't know if that's the sole thing I'm supposed to be doing, but um, I, I didn't, and I, I think there were signs within the internships when I was doing them that that might be the case, but I didn't pick up on it soon enough. <laughs> but, but I do think that's really important to try things and go with an open mind. You know, maybe I'll like this, maybe I won't. And, um, see where the Lord leads with that. So if you have an internship and you do it for a while, because there's always a learning curve to starting new things. Right. And you say, this isn't for me. There's no reason to look at that as a failure. That's a success. You got to find out something before you put all your time and money and effort into it. Right. Okay. One of the things that happens also is they, they go looking for example, do I want to be a farmer? And there's other things that, that you find out along the way, not only yes or no about farming, but you get experience in other things. In our case, particularly with Graham, he uh, came to us uh, to the market as a vendor. So that's how we first met him. He brought his grass fed beef to the market and we carried it in the market. And as we began to get to know him and, you know, found out that we were reading some of the same books and um, listening to some of the same podcasts and, you know, we're, we're just exploring um, in, in more, more earnestness. What does biblical, uh, what is, what does a biblical marketplace look like? You know, what, quality of products do we bring? What kind of integrity is in the marketplace? And, you know, that that God has a call in our life. What does that look like as um, business people, as farmers, as, um, as students, not just thinking that there's these secular jobs and you go this route to get it, or there's these 
spiritual jobs and everybody goes to, you know, um, seminary, but that God's call is for every area of life in there. He speaks to those things, animal husbandry and economics and, uh, you know, um, it, the marketplace, all those things. So when, as we got to know Graham and realized that he was working through some of the same things that we were recognizing, oh, this is really important. We got to pay attention to these things. And we we really started, um, you know, a great conversation. But 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 as the Lord has um, has ordained, Graham was sort of out of the picture for a while. He actually took his um, products to another market and we didn't see him for what? Almost a year. Right, Graham? Yeah, something like that. And, right. and it was the Lord that brought him back, uh, back to us, not about farming so much, but because of the biblical worldview that, that he was, um, that he was in dialogue, that he was able to engage with, my husband and I, I think okay. that's kind of what brought you back around. Right, Graham? Right. So, Graham, this is not your first internship. No. What made working at the local APX market something that you were interested in, given all your previous experience and in other internship opportunities? Right. Well, I guess a couple of them are. One was like um, Nancy just mentioned, the, the worldview thing. And I was... Um, you know, I was really drawn to what they were trying to do with working in the local community and, um, you know, living out the gospel and all the different things that they talk about, you know. And uh, so that that was obviously a big one. And then the other thing was that uh, as I've been learning more about kind of the direction I'm wanting to go, not necessarily limiting it to just farming, um, one of the things I've thought a lot about is doing content creation and things. And they, they, when I went, went and talked to them, not even considering the idea of the internship, we were just visiting and they were talk. I was mentioning that and they said, well, we've been looking for somebody to do that kind of thing. So it, there was a providential element there. I feel like of um, God was, God was bringing us together and they, they had a need and I had something that I was trying to expand. And so it just made sense. Okay. So in all good relationships, there has to be benefit to each party. And right. so, Nancy, you explained that you didn't have this matrix that said, we're going to check off these boxes and then we're going to find somebody who fits into this pattern. How do you know whether, I mean, did you guys establish that at any point you could be forthright with each other and say, you know, I'm committing to this amount of time, but after that we'll each reevaluate? Oh yes, we did. Um, this is, uh, we did, establish a three month internship with Graham where he is going to help us do some stuff with our uh, website and um, our email campaigns and help us do some content development for our website and uh, things like that. And, um, and also he's not just working on that. He's also working with Don uh, my husband in doing some um, some biblical worldview mentoring stuff. So so he's being mentored with Don and and talking through some of the things. This what does the scripture say? What does that look like um, in business and and um, in the marketplace? While at the same time we're doing the um, the website website content development and um, uh, media marketing things. That's things that Graham needs to learn or wants to learn and has interest in learning. That's stuff, a need that we have. And um, so it just seemed like a good, it, it was just really a good fit, you know? Um, if we had had somebody else come in and say, hey, I, I'm, I'm really um, interested in retail or I'm really interested in, um, farm to table food. I'm a cook. How do I do that? So, so whatever somebody else might be interested in doing, we would love to help that young person do it because we need to come alongside them and help. That's what education is about. Andre, we've talked about education being that, that we are preparing our young people for God's calling on their life. We have to give them the space to, 
to um, wobble through that, you know, and and try it out in some some spaces. So that's what we have opportunity to do here, and are are thrilled to be have have Graham with us. I think I got off on a tangent. Did I answer your question? I think you did. Um, okay. Graham, I have a question for you. What do your family and friends think about your pursuing the whole internship thing, and then specifically with Don and Nancy? Yeah, the uh, I think they've been they've always been very supportive. Um, thankfully, my parents were never the type that were like, "Oh, you've got to go to college." I know some people grow up in families where it's not a it's not a question of if you will go to college; it's you know you will go to college kind of thing. But they're very supportive of me with pursuing the internships and with um, you know um, with this one as as well. You know, and with me being a little older with this one, I'm a little more independent on it than I was with the other ones I did. But yeah, they're they've definitely been supportive of me all along the way. So as a young man, um, you probably had aspirations of someday being a husband, father, having your own family. Um, along with this internship, do you also have to maintain a way to uh, make a living? Because at this point, it looks like you're still in the volunteer phase of this internship. Right. Yeah. Right now, I work for my dad um, about three days a week with his window cleaning business. And, um, and then I have the farm, but the farm is kind of just trying to just trying to pay for itself. <laughs> but the, uh, um, but yeah, so right now I'm, you know, paying the bills with working for my dad. Right. And so it yeah. sounds to me, Nancy, that you and Don purposed that you were going to focus on young people who were looking to fulfill their calling unto God and give them an opportunity to explore the kinds of things that you do with your family business. Yes. Yes. In the local EPX market, like I said, it's a, it, we have a retail space. We're looking to put in a kitchen where we're an event space. We bring to the area local and regional food farming artisan vendors. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of bandwidth there for young people to explore different things. So, um, you know, we are certainly open to anything in those, in those areas and and you wouldn't necessarily think of technology being a food farm and artisan thing but one we definitely know that um in today's world that you have to be able to embrace and use the technology so so that was um something that that graham has interest in doing and, and not just in the getting a computer job but to communicate, he wants to, he wants to develop content. He wants to be a communicator. And that is something that is, is really important, you know, so he's not just learning the, um, you know, the technical skills of setting up the website, but practicing that, um, that communication from a biblical worldview, that's the real work here that's being done and the real discipling and mentoring and, and exploring that much more than, than the, um, than the technology of setting up the website or the um, sentence structure is to communicate that um, biblical worldview in the area of, um, of, local local farm local food local business wherever that takes him we want to um we want him to move forward and help him move forward in a way that is um will fulfill god's call on his life and help him with a vocation so that he can support his family and have a a family earning wage one day Right. Now, one of the things that I think is really crucial about an internship experience and something you mentioned, Graham, about having a farm and right now the farm is really working to support itself. Having a farm is more than raising animals and raising food. You have to market what you have. You have to find people to sell to. You have to make allowance for with if the weather is cooperative or not and being able to survive. You also need to in farming to ascertain what are God's laws related to farming so that you're not violating the creator's mandates in order to do it. And so I think giving people a space to learn this is valuable. And it looks like Graham, you have um, gravitated towards learning experience so that you can have a solid foundation on whatever you choose to end up concentrating your efforts on. Is that right? 
Right. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah the um, yeah, that, that would sum it up pretty well. Okay. All right. Um, Nancy, do you think that people just have to have a business that people can intern or do you think this is an idea that could expand to families where, you know, the mother and the father have certain skills. Maybe they don't quote unquote make a living by it, but let's say a woman had a catering business before she, you know, started her family or um, a man had, uh, it's not how he makes his living, but he's skilled in a particular thing. Do you think this apprenticeship internship idea can expand beyond just an individual business? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think that, um, you know, as the Lord gives us opportunity to share with young people our experience and our skills, and um, we can we can do that wherever we are. We just are um, have been just given the opportunity to have the sp have a have a space in a a real focused sense of doing that. You can. You don't have to have a business. You don't have to have a storefront. You just have to have the um, the the sense that you're helping the next generation to advance the kingdom of God using the skills and interests that they've given them. So if you're a mom and you you used to be a caterer and you got a, a young person that's interested in exploring that concept, I would highly encourage you to um, to do that and look at it from a biblical worldview. How does this advance the kingdom of God? And not like we're just going to put little uh, fish on our cupcakes, but you know what? You know, I mean, we really have to think through what is what's it look like biblically in all these different um, industries and spheres of influence that we have, no matter how great or small we perceive them to be at the moment. All right. Well, Graham, I want to thank you for joining us. Um, I'm sure Nancy's got stuff for you to do today. So thank you for sharing a little bit about your background and your passion. And we certainly hope that you uh, succeed in finding that which God wants you to focus most of your attention on. So thanks, Graham. Nancy, let me just say that in hearing you talk, um, it sounds very much like a wider application of older women discipling younger women, older men discipling younger men. And mm -hmm. I think that if we're going to do the homeschool idea, um, it's due, uh, what do you call it? That we're going to say, look, we appreciate the fact that families wanted to give their children a Christian education people in business, whether they have their own business or whether they're part of a greater business, that they really seek to help homeschoolers have these opportunities. Um, I would think, and I once asked the question of someone who had been homeschooled, I said, if you were hiring someone, would you hire, who would you give precedence to? Someone who had been homeschooled or someone who had gone to college? And his answer was rather interesting. He, he said, if someone had gone to college, I would at least have a sense that they had to get through difficult things and they had to do things in order to take so many classes. He said, however, I think I would give precedence in an interview to a homeschooler because I would realize that pretty quickly I would find out if this person knew how to be self-starting because as a homeschool um, young person, there comes a point at which your parents really say, here's the material, we expect you to know it. They don't sit there in front of a whiteboard and teach classes every single day, um, especially with big families. That would be very, very inefficient. You teach someone how to read, you teach someone how to write, and then you sort of set them loose. So um, I think that we should all want to, if, especially if we've been involved in homeschooling like your family and my family has, that we always seek ways to help the homeschoolers out. You know, the scripture says, do good unto all men, especially unto those of the household of faith. Well, it sounds to me like you were looking for people who fit the bill for those who are of the household of faith, but then we expanded to saying, they have an investment that maybe doesn't look the same on paper as someone who has gone conventional means, but we recognize that they have assets and abilities that are commensurate with being in a homeschool environment.
Right. Very true. Yeah. Absolutely right. And, um, you know, a, as believers, whether those, like we said before, Andrea, education is about preparing them for their calling and Christianity is for every area of life. We can't limit it to the textbooks. We can't limit it to these very organized structures too many times, too, too many times people go to college in on on student loans and it it they don't even realize that that is not that's not biblical to to go and strap that that debt on a young person um so that they can check off the box and say they went to school i i we called it 13th grade and i told my kids don't go there don't go to 13th grade you because it is it is costly and you have to know what the value of what you're buying. And so, so go into college. If you, if you're, if God's calling your life requires college, he'll provide for you to go there. And we don't need to just automatically assume that that's the next step for our students because God's purpose for, for them may certainly be of much, uh, much, much greater, um, and much, um, greater influence and um, a more uh, personalized route. How about that? A little more personal. And let me say this, there are plenty of people who, when they finish their quote unquote formal high school years, that they really need time to figure out, I don't know what I want to do. And so internships like we've talked about that you're providing are a good way for people to figure it out. But if they're making money, then they can pay for their, necessary academic education out of the funds they make rather than having to get loans. And so I know many who worked and established themselves as breadwinners, either for themselves or their families, and then they got a degree where it was necessary or where they deemed it necessary along the way. And you talk to most professors who are worth their salt. They want people who are there learning because they know why they're there, not because there was nothing else to do. Exactly. Exactly right. Exactly. Okay. Well, well, thank you. Thank you for sharing Graham with us. And I should let our listeners know that we're going to take a week off because uh, we won't be meeting next week, but we do have another guest slotted for two weeks from today who will help us expand on this idea of how to truly give the next generation opportunities to take their place as those who are furthering the kingdom of God. So thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Andrea. Talk to you next time. All right.